This video documentary is going to be for our Sociology of Food and Eating class. The members of the group are Megan Aruda, Aaron Dice, and Megan Goulart. We're all third year psychology students enrolled in this class. We chose to go to Loblaws near the Madame Athletic Center on College Street because it's pretty well known to be one of the most powerful supermarket franchises in Canada in terms of its financial assets and its access to a variety of different products. Another advantage that Loblaws has is its geographical dominance, taking up a lot of space across Canada. Overall, this information is kind of what led us to choose Loblaws for this assignment so we could experience this supermarket powerhouse firsthand. We decided to investigate the meat aisle because all of our group members have been vegetarians for around the past four years now. And because of this, we have previous insight into some of the injustices with the meat industry and wanted to dive deeper into the issues and really examine the products hands on. We all went vegetarian in high school when our parents were still kind of buying groceries for us and therefore we kind of have avoided these aisles for years and now we're curious to examine the actual food and see what we've been missing and maybe see if it reaffirms our choices. We are also really big advocates for animal rights so this issue along with many others in the industry are extremely important to us and is something we are deeply passionate about. We were really surprised about the treatment that animals received in slaughterhouses. We of course knew about them, but weren't 100% sure about what was going on in them. And transportation of the animals is also very key to the food systems. And it's often left out of the conversation about the abuse these animals face. Transportation can lead to multitude of injuries and even death, yet incidences are rarely investigated only when one percent and more of the animals in the truck have died we've all passed trucks with animals in them but we've never given thought into the mistreatment that occurs to them during these times at the slaughterhouses the animals are stunned unconscious before being killed however sometimes this isn't successful and they're left hanging in pain before they die this was a hard fact to read and even harder to imagine it actually happening and overall this was very surprising because we were aware of the mistreatment of animals but not to the extent that they experience in slaughterhouses but not what they experience when being transported some of the packaging does not explicitly state where it is from and this is evident here on the labeling of this beef stew your neighborhood butcher and if a consumer is unaware of the brand or does not bother to look it up online they will probably not know this brand is and that it was prepared for Loblaws Canada and further spoken in the lecture when meat is cut up like this the average consumer can't tell what part of the animal the meat is from and it's clear in many products like this where meat is caught up into small chunks Most of the meat came from Ontario, which was an expectation we didn't really have coming into the supermarket, and we didn't think about this prior, but it is reassuring in a sense to know that the meat does not travel too far to get to the supermarket. However, we don't know how many locations or stops the meat has been to prior to coming to the supermarket. If it stays within Ontario, this at least limits the mileage. but. This doesn't mean that the meat is more fresh as it doesn't account for any sick or dead animals while in transport. In regards to labeling, we disagree with some of the information that's being presented to consumers, specifically when companies put pictures of farmers onto the meat products. To us, this makes it seem like they're trying to personalize the product and present it like it's coming straight from the farmer's backyard. However, this seems to ignore the middle 
factors in the food system and glorifies the products to act as if they'd be selling from a farmer's market. There's also no way to determine if these farmers are legit and if they really are who they say they are. Further, we believe that while everyone says they want me to be without hormones, antibiotics, MSGs, etc., not everyone actually knows what these things are or what they do to our food and to humans. We think it's come to a point that these labels are required on meat for consumers to buy them. Again, while these labels make these claims, the average consumer is not going to check if they are actually living up to these standards, nor, for example, will they think about the effects this has on animals, such as higher mortality rates due to animals unable to receive antibiotics for illness. We also were unaware of the section on organic farming and how the author reminded us that it aims to raise animals humanely in an ecologically sustainable way without the use of artificial pesticides or fertilizers. But this translates into banning antibiotics and hormones, which in turn leads to higher livestock mortality rates than conventional farms. We knew organic farming was not the perfect solution to conventional and factory farming, but we were unaware of how many animals actually die due to the belief that they're being farmed in a better way. But this merely reiterates the discourse around that are eaten by humans and that's just that they're there for us to consume and they're not living beings. Regarding our eating and purchasing habits, we believe as consumers that we're in control of our health and our lives, but in reality, the government and major companies manipulate what we buy every time we shop. As non-meat eaters, there appears to be a lot less effort in the packaging and aesthetics of imitation meat products than what is done to real meat products. For instance, in the frozen aisle with the meat section, usually these products have the name of the company and a smaller picture of the item on the packaging, but for meat products, there is typically a large image of the food item that looks appetizing and is clearly curated for consumers to be drawn towards it. Therefore, consumers are eating habits are based on what we purchase and see in the stores, and the more appetizing an item looks, the more likely we are to buy it. Whenever I show my friends some of my imitation meat products, they usually say, ew, that looks really good gross it doesn't look real it's not as good as the real thing and this has a lot to do with the packaging and the looks and the aesthetics of the products when people see the stores and they don't think that's something that they could do or make or eat and when you compare the two it really does not look appetizing so overall like food preferences have a lot less to do with taste and a lot more to do with appearance and properly crafted marketing There were many products that specified that they were 100% Canadian meat and many organic blue menu items where Loblaws made a point to put the label of Canadian meat not only on the packages themselves but right above the meat aisle in large letters on the store. This is interesting because this highlights that Loblaws clearly prides themselves in making customers feel safer about putting their money towards Canadian run industries but we learned that just because this meat is Canadian does not mean the animals are not treated poorly in the process of transporting animals and that animals do still die in transport trucks and these deaths are not looked into. Regardless of where the meat is grown, the animals always need to be transported which risks death and illness. Overall, this experience really reinforced our assumptions about the meat industry and the previous knowledge we had while being vegetarians. It's quite clear that important components of selling products such as labeling is often misleading and done so to convince the consumer to purchase their product because at the end of the day, companies want you to buy from them and are willing to do whatever they can to make that purchase happen regardless of the negative impact it may have on the health of all people across Canada.